certain people who support certain clubs are not having you at all because they remember certain incidents. And they're like, no, they got it wrong that day and we can't forgive them. But that's the nature of the game, isn't it? It's yeah. all about opinion, Howard. Yeah. And you know that. You knew it when you were refereeing. Yeah, of course. And, and you know, the areas cut deep, don't they? And the, the things that people remember. Uh, it's interesting. I've, I've been to I've been to see most of the clubs since I came into the job in, in December. I've got around most of the Premier League clubs and quite a few Football League clubs as well. And, yeah. and most clubs tell me that the 50-50s go against them. In fact, every club's told me that. And of course, that can't be the case, can it? Because where do the 50s go? But they're the decisions that people remember. They're the things that, that cut deep. They're the things that, that leave an impact. You know, mm. a, a good decision kind of like just passes away quite, quite quickly uh, and doesn't leave a, a, a scar. Um, yeah. So yeah. that's the world in which we work. We understand that. That's why my job is to try to reduce those errors as much as we possibly can. And when I say errors, I mean, you know, those things that are, that are clearly wrong, not the things that are subjective that, you know, that maybe um, can be interpreted in different ways and aren't necessarily errors, just maybe are perceived as errors. And one of the things I've got to do as well is change the way the referees are perceived because I think the perception doesn't quite match reality. We need to be better, um, but I think there's a perception that we're not as good as what... But how is sunlight is the best are. disinfectant. It's no good you running clips of how it works. That's great. That smooths everyone past the line. Listen, if I push a keyboard and Q gets typed, I assume it works. So I don't assume that I need to know what the binary code is behind it. So I assume you guys are doing a professional job. Yeah. What I want to know is why it doesn't work. What I want you to show me is why the decisions that you guys got wrong were wrong. So I'm not interested in the PR bit of, this is how it works, it looks great, we're all professional, we can all, we've can all we got APP and we've got... not interested in that. I'm interested when it doesn't work, I want to know why it doesn't work and where that fault line um, causes the issues it's causing because it's now gone from referees being accused of making mistakes to VAR exacerbating the problem rather than reducing it. Well, Simon makes a good point, Howard. And to an extent, you're in the dock here, but I know you're comfortable with it. PGMOL admitted a mistake in the game between Tottenham and Brighton uh, in the 2-1 defeat at Spurs when Mitoma was taken down the area by Hoiberg. The incident was waved away by the referee Atwell and dismissed by the VAR official Michael Salisbury, which has now been deemed the incorrect call. On that day, a number of big errors, and it still sticks with people that that day it failed. Yeah, um, we acknowledge that particular situation has been been incorrect. Is that uh, all you can do? Uh, no, no, of course we do more than that. We uh, we look at why we we didn't get it right. Of course, we uh, we have not a duty and obligation to to the game to look to look at that and say, okay, let's talk about where we we, we fell short. What was it that led us to to get to the wrong outcome? Uh, and where's the learning? And we share. That information, obviously, as a management team, we'll do that with the officials. We'll get their opinion as well, of course, just like any club would do after a defeat. And then we'll you know, try to take that learning into the next game and reduce the errors. We're judged by an independent key match incident panel, so we're not marking our own homework on this. Good point. Um, yeah. we'll, be, we'll be graded next year. This, this panel came in this year for the first time, and the, the outcomes that are coming out of that panel obviously will be comparable next year, year on year. It's the first year this year. Um, but my target will be to reduce those those errors. Sure. Um, but, 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 but Perfection is impossible, Howard, isn't it? Well, well, yeah. I mean, it is when you're first and foremost dealing with human beings or working in a, in a pressured environment. But sec And we, we strongly believe that by additional training, by you know them following process, by picking the right people... To uh, to give the assignments to the appointments yeah. to, yeah, um, will give us a higher likelihood of being being successful. But understanding some, from time to time mistakes will be made. I said when I came into this role that I would acknowledge errors that were really clear. I do it quite a lot in terms of the dialogue to to teams when I, when it's necessary. Sometimes we'll do it publicly. Striking that balance of when to make a public acknowledgement is not always easy. I'll be honest. Sure. Um, because you know I don't hear people. But that's the battleground. That's the battleground. It's great that you show them how it works. Again, I make the point. The next step surely has to be to show people when it doesn't work, clearly because they can see it for themselves, but why? And then you start getting people on board with understanding how errors get made because right now what people are suggesting, and I think there's an element of it, is there's a lack of accountability. There's no measurables, there's no benchmarks, there's ideas behind statistics that are coming out that people are questioning and the room needs to be won back. Well, and that, be will, fair be, to and that will be by embracing the outcomes. You've promised regular TV shows next season, Howard, to explain controversial refereeing and VAR decisions. Will that be the good and the bad? Of course, of course. I mean, and last night was a first step. 
You know, we've not heard this before anywhere. It's the, I mean, we, we, uh, we've not seen it in any of the big European leagues where the VAR audio has been played out post-game in this way. We're not able to do it live at the moment, in-game. At the, at the moment, uh, the International FA Board and FIFA don't allow that. Maybe that will change. We're, I'm part of a working group looking to see if we can get the, uh, the opportunity to play audio out live. But at the moment, we can't. So we're doing the next best thing. We're playing it out afterwards. It's a step in the right direction, we think. What are the we, objections to playing it out live? I think they feel that the, the programme's still fairly new. I think they, they feel it's still in its infancy. Um, officials are still developing the way to communicate with each other. I think they're always aware of the need to um, think about how skilled officials are at communicating in something that's pretty new and ensuring that they maintain their kind of levels of credibility. I think that's understandable. Bearing in mind as well, around the world... People are at different stages of this journey. You know, we've been here for, what, four or five years now in the Premier League and Major League Soccer, it's six years. In Germany, it's six. Some countries are just coming online now. And if we're going to play out live, then there's an expectation it's done everywhere in the world. So I think there's a, there's a feeling globally that, you know, and you, you can agree or disagree with that. We're, we're to be clear, we're pushing this. We want yes, we want as yeah. much information out as possible. Last night was the first step. We uh, we picked a selection of clips that showed a range of types of incidents because there is some kind of misunderstanding about the basic processes that, that are applied. Yeah. But we fully understand, this is a bold move, and we fully understand that once you draw that curtain back and open that box, it's open and we have to show everything. Yeah. And, and we actually want people to understand. On the occasions we get it wrong, and it's, it's, it's less than people would think, but when we do, I'd rather people understand the rationale for why that happened. Okay, so you, so that people aren't worried about okay. bias or, or the integrity of our officials is really high they're professional but they make errors sometimes like everybody yeah. else in the game and showing showing people why i think helps people understand or even if you don't agree with the final decision in this in this world of, of football this subjective world of football at least understanding the rationale helps do you want, people do you want your boys and girls to have a voice because i want you guys to have a voice i want you to be out after the game not not you I mean, the individual officials on match day having the same sort of scrutiny and the same sort of accountability individually as the players and the managers have. Do you want that? Oh, I certainly want to humanise them, Simon. I want them, I want them to be seen for the people that they are, the football-loving, dedicated professional that they are. I, I worry a little, just a little bit about the dynamic of them only being spoken to post-game when something's gone wrong. Mm -hmm. So we're not we're not in the same world as players and coaches who are interviewed when they've scored a hat trick or made a great substitution late. But you in the are game in the same space when managers are being interviewed when they've lost games and teams are getting relegated and players yes. are getting booed yep. off a pitch. Yeah, that's true. That also happens, of course. We accept that as well. But in our world, I, I can foresee a situation where we'd only get get spoken to when there's a, a, a mistake or a perceived mistake. But maybe that's somewhere where we have to move to. We're looking at all sort of aspects of ways we can humanise because I think if people see us for. For, for those football living professionals that I believe we are, yeah. who are contributing positively to the game most of the time, then the acceptance level of decisions will be better. The way we're perceived is better, and that's something I'm keen to do change the way that we're perceived. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.